Hey everybody, I'm George Willette. Welcome back to uh, Family Friday. This is the Bible Basics. This is just a, a video series we do um, sharing with our families and, and our grandmas and grandpas and moms and dads and trusted adults, different stuff that they can sit around the screen with their kids, grandkids, and talk about Jesus. We have been for the last couple of weeks in what we're calling apologetic evangelism. We had done a number of weeks on, on apologetics, on being ready to have an answer for the hope that is within you, to be able to give that defense, that reason why you have faith, trust. And we've switched here the last couple of weeks to talk about how we use that, how do we go out and do evangelism. So we talked about the problems, kind of the, those barriers that Christians seem to have from sharing the faith that they have, from feeling confident with having answers to some, some, some questions about their faith. And last week uh, we looked at what is evangelism because a lot of people in the church don't quite realize what it means to evangelize, that, it, that it's actually telling people about the person of Jesus Christ and what he has done. One of the other questions, uh, problems we, we talked about a few weeks ago was we as Christians tend to not realize the culture we live in or when we're going to do evangelism, the culture of the people we're trying to reach. So tonight we're going to look at culture. Now, what is culture? Now, I, I'm not going to define this from a, a dictionary text. I'm not going to go to anthropology or sociology and say, here is a, a real hardcore one. I'm going to talk from my experience. Um, almost 20 years working with children in uh, foster and adoptive care as a case manager, and then the last 10 years working um, in ministry. Culture is, is all about how a group of people think, believe, and behave. Now, now I want you to, to really ponder this for a little bit. When we're talking about culture, about understanding culture, we need to know who we're trying to reach. We need to meet them where they are at. That's our responsibility. So I need to know how they think. I mean, if, if, if they think a certain way and I'm giving them information that doesn't make sense, I need to change my, my technique. What do they already believe? And how do they behave? And those are ways that I can reach them. And this is very biblical. Uh, you will see the apostles, you will see Paul in particular working very hard to meet people where they're at, to understand who they are, so that he can then share Jesus with them. So as, as we keep thinking about culture, I want you all to think about this. That countries, nations can have a culture. I mean, that seems kind of obvious, but it's more than that. We, we tend to not think deeply enough about this. Each region or, or state, like here in America, you know, if you go to the East Coast, there seems to be a culture, and especially if you go up north. I'm originally from New England, but also in New York, there seems to be this, this, this culture there. And in big cities, there's culture. And the West Coast, coast there's a different culture and in the South. And you need to be aware of where people are from so you can know maybe why they act the way they do, talk the way they do, think the way they do, so you can reach them. Organizations can have a culture. This is a big deal in, in industrial psychology, just trying to work with big businesses. They talk about what is the corporate culture. Um, Google has a very specific kind of culture that they, that they want to do and, and foster, and they, they do specific things in specific ways to do that. Facebook, the, the, the meta company, they do it differently. IBM does it differently. Excuse me. It, it's important because what people are involved in also affects how they think. So you're going to want to kind of know people and, and, and look at people to figure out all of this. And the last one I want to think about, excuse me one second. <coughs> I've been struggling with a cough this last couple of weeks, so this may be an issue. We'll see. Um, for me, I've noticed families have culture. Each family I've ever worked with thinks a little differently. The rules of the house are different. 
expectations. <coughs> and this, this affects how we're all raised. We're, we're all kind of products of some of this. And the more I get to know someone personally, individually, intimately, and their history, their background, the more I can say, okay, here's how I need to come and talk to them, and here's some things I need to share with them. Because if I do it a certain way, I may actually turn them off. I, I may speak in a certain way, or I may act in a certain way that, that is just irritating to them. So I want to figure out a way to, to figure out the culture, the, the way people think, believe, and behave, so I can understand them. And if people have a culture where they don't understand Christianity, they don't believe in Christianity, they don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I can't expect them to behave the way a Christian should. So if I want to go reach people for Jesus, I'm going to see and hear some things, some behaviors that I wouldn't accept in myself or I would you know, talk to another Christian about, but I'm not going to be surprised when non-Christians act this way. So specifically today, I want to just share with Christians, I want you to think about this, the culture of the United States and Christianity. Because for a long time, we just assumed that, that the United States is a Christian nation, so everyone kind of believes and thinks the same thing. Well, one of the things you need to know is that a, a nation cannot be Christian or non-Christian. A nation is just a nation. It's a group of people. The people are Christian or non-Christian. That is the, the importance of what this, this religion, this relationship looks like. It's about individuals. Now, a country can be made up of people. So what is it in the United States? What do we look like? Well, I'm taking a lot of this information from the State of the Church survey done in 2016 by the Barna Group. They do a State of the Church every year survey, and there's some changes that have come recently, but I wanted to use these, these older numbers because I like the way they set them up. And we'll talk a little bit about changes as we go along. So the first thing they did is they go and they, they, they do a bunch of surveys, and 73% of Americans in 2016 claimed that they were Christian. Now that number has gone below 70% in the most recent studies I saw. So I want you to see that trend that in just six years, fewer people are claiming to be Christian. 20% uh, claim to have no faith. Agnostic, atheist, or nuns was this breakdown. Here's the interesting part for me is the more we get into the research about the nuns, people who claim no religious affiliation, they're not the same as an atheist or an agnostic person. Atheist agnostic people who, who claim that there is no God or you can't know if there's a God make up about 6% of the population. 5 or 6%. The other 15 or so percent, the nuns, are calling themselves spiritual but not religious. They still have a great deal of, of faith in, in a higher power, in something outside of themselves but they will not claim affiliation with a, a specific religious group. I think that's just an important thing for us to notice. And then 6% of those uh, that were surveyed claim to have other beliefs, such as Islam, Buddhism, Judaism, Judaism, or Hinduism. So you would assume <clears throat> that this is wonderful that in America, most of us are Christians, but I want to point out this is 73% of people claimed they were Christians. When you look deeper, when, when the Barner Group said, okay, let's break these numbers down and ask more specific questions about what does it look like for people who claim to be Christians? What are their actual beliefs and behaviors? And what do they tell us about Christianity in America? Well, when they did that, the numbers changed pretty dramatically. First, they separated between churched and unchurched. Now, church people, they're just people who have attended a church service, now get this, in the last six months. But those, that attendance could not be for a wedding, a funeral, or a special event. It was actually for a time of worship or study. Unchurched people are people who did not attend any church service in the last six months before they were surveyed. So what does that look like? Remember, 73% of people claim they were Christians. 55% were church. They actually attended 
worship fellowship together with other believers. 45%, even though they claimed Christianity, were unchurched. Okay, so they're going to say I'm a Christian but not go to church. They looked at this thing called being born again. Um, don't get too hung up on some of these, these words. This was just an easy way for them to make a category to say, how do we define people? Born again are people who said that they had made a personal commitment to Jesus and that that commitment was still important in their lives when they were surveyed. And they believe that when they die, they're going to go to heaven because they've confessed their sins and accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They put their hope, their faith, their trust in the person of Jesus. Now that's still really vague because we've talked in doctrine what it means to be a Christian and how you become a Christian. But still think about it. There was these 55% that went to church, but how many of those actually claim to be born again? That, that this is a personal commitment to Jesus and that's important to them and that they're going to go to heaven because of this relationship. 35%. I, I, I think you, I'm hoping you see the importance of understanding culture. In America, we tend to, to speak in really vague language and, oh, we're Christian and these, this person's Christian and that person's Christian. But I want to know again what they think, what they believe, what they do, how they behave. So now we're down to 35% of, of people who would actually be able to say they were born again. So they, they did even more. Okay, they said, okay, so you, you say you're, you're, you're a born again believer in Jesus Christ, a born again Christian, but are you a practicing Christian? To be defined as a practicing Christian, this was people who said their faith was very important to them and they attended church at least once a month. I will say as a way to define Christianity, to, to say that they attend once a month, that's pretty wide open. Uh, it used to be that to be a regular attender in, in worship meant that you were there three or four times a month, if not more, with the other classes that could be offered and the other opportunities. But you'd be there a minimum of three to four times a month. Now, one time a month, in saying that your faith is very important, you're a practicing Christian. What percent of people are these? 31%. So even with these born-again people who said that it's very important, that it's a personal commitment they made to Jesus, but only 31% are kind of practicing actually doing something with their faith, with their, their, their belief. But they went down even further. Again, they just wanted to kind of get deep into what does Christianity look like in America? Excuse me again, I apologize for the cough. Okay, they use this term evangelical Christian. Now I want to stop here, time out. Let's pause. In America, the term evangelical has become a political term. Um, this is not how it's used in this context. It's not how I use it. Historically, an evangelical Christian is um, someone who holds very orthodox beliefs um, doctrines of the church, and is also committed to sharing Jesus with other people who don't yet know him. That's kind of where I'm coming from. So in this study, this is what they said. To be labeled or, or defined as an evangelical Christian, it were people that met the definition of born-again Christian. Remember, people that were committed. They, they said it was very important, and, and they believed this personal relationship with Jesus They'd confess their sins, trusted in Jesus, and they believed they'd go to heaven because of that relationship. So that, and they were people that believed all of these following statements. There's seven of them, so stick with me for just a minute. They will say that their faith is very important in their lives today. They believe that they have a personal responsibility to share their religious belief about Christ with non-Christians. They actually believe that Satan exists, that Satan is an actual being, a created being, an angel that God made who fell from heaven. They believe that Jesus Christ is a real person who lived a sinless life on earth. 
They believe that the Bible is accurate in all that it teaches. They believe that eternal salvation, that being saved and being able to be in the presence of God is only possible through grace from God, not their works. <coughs> Again, I am so sorry to put you guys through the coughing. We're almost done, though. Number seven, the seventh question, is they also believe that God is the all-knowing, all-powerful, perfect deity who created the universe and still rules it today, is still active in his creation. Now, I want, I want to say this. Those seven statements are not radical statements. When you look at Christianity over, over the last 2,000 years, that's a pretty good indicator of what some orthodox, general accepted beliefs of Christians are. It's what it means to be a Christian. Now, people who claimed this to be born again, remember that definition, and believed all seven of those statements made up 7% of the population. I want that to sink in. Of the thousands of people that were, were interviewed, that were surveyed, of all the data points that were collected of people who claimed to be Christians, 73% of the population in 2016 in America said they were Christians. But only 7% would be defined as such this way. Now, I don't know the hearts of all the people that are out there that claim to be Christians. I don't know the nature of salvation for them. But I will tell you, that's concerning for me. That there is so much biblical illiteracy in this country that people who claim faith don't know some of the most basic teachings of the Bible. That's a concern. It's why so many people say we're a Christian country because for them, Christianity is cultural. It's not personal. It is a way to label yourself, but it's not transformative in changing your heart, your mind, your soul, your, your life. So the question is, what do these numbers tell me about what evangelism looks like for me where I live? Remember, you gotta figure out where you live and what it looks like. But what we can't do in the church is assume because someone claims to be a Christian, that they are a Bible-believing, born-again, practicing evangelical Christian. So I need to ask questions. I need to get to know them, and then how do I interact with them, and what are some of those barriers talking to other people? So we're gonna spend um, the next couple of months, probably, looking into the neighborhood, looking into what it means to evangelize, to, to share Jesus, and the different kind of people we're going to meet and some general ideas of how we can share Christ with people. So I know this is a little different. I hope it was helpful. But think on this as we go forward, and we'll see you next week as we continue on apologetic evangelism. God bless.